Hey everyone, Ivy League Gaming here, and today we're playing Dragonair Silent Gods. For today's video, we're going to go into the Grave of Rot. We have been doing a series on all of the dungeon content, and now it's time to give a proper updated guide for Season 1 versus this fight. Today's video is sponsored by Dragonair Silent Gods, my favorite sponsor because it's my favorite game that I've played in a long time. Be sure to join us for Season 3, Dive Deep, Battle Peak. There's a ton of new heroes, new bosses, and lots to explore. Be sure to download via Android, iOS, Mac, PC, Steam, or Epic Games if you haven't already, and use the currently working promo codes. All right, so the Grave of Ra, let's head on over there. That is the topic for today's video. We are in Season 1. Currently, I am playing a new account with the new changes to Season 1, which are amazing. And I'm only on Day 18, but I'm actually quite behind in the story. And as far as my progression goes, I don't have a ton of 5-star heroes and legendary gear yet. But that's not the point of today's video. Today's video is to talk about the Grave of Ra. We're going to talk about the mechanics of this boss, how to combat it, and who's good for it, and then how to actually get through this content, as well as let's discuss the gear sets that come along with it. So, first of all, the Grave of Ra. This is the dungeon where you get the support type gear. So when it comes to the legendary gear sets that we're hoping to get, it is the Brotherhood set, which is Accuracy and Skill Haste, and this was so much fun. I really missed this set. It was great. After the wearer unleashes their ultimate, allies obtain 15% attack for 10 seconds. This was so, so good for people that had fast ultimates, or just in general, to have this on multiple people sometimes that also needed accuracy. You could really keep up a bonus attack buff on your heroes easily. Really good set for Season 1 um, for anyone that has a decent... Uh, ultimate or just anyone that's part of your rotation honestly even if you're doing a 20 second rotation it's still great to have this extra attack buff uh we also have the holy hunter set which is a favorite of all of ours for especially content like uh pillar of trial or fey meander so this is accuracy plus resistance but more importantly when the wearer deals damage to an enemy there's a 20 percent chance to inflict stun for three seconds derivative damage won't trigger this effect so this is our amazing set that I would put on anyone that does AoE damage, especially multi-hits, since it's more chances to proc the stun. So I always had Voresh in a stun set. It's something I always talk about that gives him such great utility as a hero. He's a perfect candidate for the Holy Hunter set. He hits the entire board with no uh, concern for wear, and he does so three times. You guys can probably see in some of my past content where I also like to use Drista Orden in a damage stun set with of this uh with damage stats because he hits like three times plus his uh Gwen Gwenevar hits as well, so he hits like six hits. Really, really cool for this set. So that's kind of the, the gist of the sets. We also have Mythic Gear now added to season one. This is also in season three at the moment. Hopefully soon to season two as well. It's a little weird that it's not in both, but there are some really cool sets here. So this one, uh, wearer is immune to stun, but each second of that stun's duration reduces the wearer's ultimate energy. So this is really quirky because if you're like, you're trying to not get stunned so you can use your ultimate, it kind of counteracts itself. But maybe if you're someone that has a really good battle skill and you're going against some waves that do stuns in Pillar of Trial or Famiander or Arena even, uh, this could really be a huge help. And then we have the Tunnel King's Cloak. This is a 50% chance of dispelling one buff from the enemy when inflicting debuffs on them. So it makes your debuffers also become a debuffer in a different way, which is really cool. I think that's actually quite clever. And it just adds extra utility to your heroes that are applying debuffs. Now, remember, inflicting debuffs are the ones that show up in red, not the purple ones, which are considered control effects. And then this one is going to be really important for a lot of content I could see, especially the endgame boss for Season 3. But we're talking Season 1 now, so let's stick to that. 
uh, the wearer dispels one debuff from themselves when they cast their ultimate skill. So this is amazing. Even in something like Vortex, you could use it for as well. If you don't have a cleanser or a debuff immunity hero to prevent those decreased defense, defense penalty debuffs from the boss when you're doing level 4 of difficulty, if you have people wearing this, they're going to remove that defense penalty before they do their ultimate. And that could be all you need. So that's a really, really helpful uh, skill. It just, it does it. You don't have to worry about a chance to do it. It just does it. And then last, there's this wolf spine gloves. 20% of the damage dealt by the wearer will be converted into healing when their HP is below 50%. AoE damage can only trigger this 30% of this effect. This is really cool. This is, um, yeah, this is honestly like, Oh, an interesting way of having kind of some lifesteal, but I, I haven't personally used it yet. So let me know in the comments below if you guys have found a fun use for this set. All right, and to quickly mention the lower tier, the epic gear, of course, there is just accuracy and skill haste and accuracy plus resistance. Simple as that, but definitely helpful as we need it. So um, the Grave of Rot is definitely an important dungeon to farm. But you're obviously going to farm the Grave of Venom as your core focus in the beginning. But once you get some good gear from Grave of Venom, you could really start pushing the other dungeons as well. And try to take advantage of these sets. Like, this Holy Hunter set is the key, I swear. Having two or three people even to push Faye Meander, this is your answer. So don't, don't neglect the Grave of Rot is what I'm saying. Alright, let's take a look at the mechanics here. Um... So we have the debuff immunity, attack penalty, defense up, and damage reduction as the suggestions versus this boss. Which is totally true because this boss throws a whole bunch of stuff at you. Healing reduction, poison as well. And then also recharging speed penalty, which can throw off your speed tune if you have one set. So you don't want that to happen. Ideally, you want to cleanse this immediately as soon as the boss does the skill. Or you want to prevent it from happening in the first place, which is where debuff immunity heroes are really important. Attack penalty is really helpful as well, um, because, of course, the boss is going to do some damage here. And you kind of want to, you kind of want to um, mitigate that damage. So after that, you could, you could do it. There's two AoE damage, right? Like, there, it doesn't really matter which one you do it in, in front of, I guess. Technically, you could do it before. This skill and have it cover these two skills, so it's doing both of it. Uh, this one is a little bit... This is a lot here as well. So this is also restoring HP based on the damage dealt. This one is one with Devour. And you, when you restore the HP based on damage dealt, this, this is very similar to the shield mechanic of the other bosses like the Flame Domain and the Grave of Curse. So if, if it's based on the damage dealt, if the boss isn't doing that much damage... Uh, you could try to mitigate that damage by having defense up, damage reduction, buffs, or you could have a shield on your heroes as well. So shield uh, heroes or like the ice traveler as as like a main core being used makes a lot of sense for this as well to also prevent the boss from healing. But honestly, one thing that this does not mention is healing prohibition is really important as well because... Uh, if the boss is going to heal, you could at least prevent that from happening or lower it, right? So Sigrid is really great for this boss, of course. Uh, quick note here. Basic attacks have a 50% chance of inflicting poison on the target. Each existing debuff on the target, the damage dealt increases by 5%. So the more debuffs you have, the more damage that the boss is going to do with basic attacks. So you definitely need cleansers. Or preventers to handle all these poisons that are going to come at you. And of course we can't control the boss. But you can slow the boss down. You can have recharging speed penalty on the boss. You could have ultimate energy reduction done to the boss. So that's something to keep in mind as far as your speed tunes go. But keep in mind again this recharging speed penalty. This debuff can really throw off a speed tune. So you have to either consider it. Or uh, hope you have a strong enough team to... Be successful even if you have that debuff on you right or you're just full yolo with your builds all right so looking at a team composition some of the mvps are gonna be fits because he has this great skill where he removes all debuffs from the allies 
and transfers them to himself. But if you build him with resistance, you don't have to worry about him actually getting those debuffs. But you want to keep this well looped to actually cleanse the debuffs at the right time, of course, or else it's going to really hurt with all the damage you get dealt to you. So this is a fun one. He actually also dispels another debuff from himself here. If you do get some, and puts defense up. And the more debuffs he has, the less damage he takes. So he has built-in damage mitigation. But ideally, you just want to give him resistance based on what's needed in order to counteract all the debuffs being transferred to him. So he's an MVP tank versus this boss. And yeah, fun choice. Given that we get like Charlotte and Isotarium for free now as well, you could certainly have them be the main DPS. I'm going to use Erich, who's also a free hero, as our DPS as an example. Megan, who is a rare. Sigrid, who is a rare. And Hexandra, who is a rare as our team. So we're going to kind of see how we do here. Um, I'm having a hard time progressing. I just haven't had the time to push my account. So I'm not that high, but it's okay. It's the principle and it's the discussion that is more important here. It's not about what heroes or how far we are. I just want to make sure we all talk about the mechanics for this boss. And keep in mind, again, like this is stage 7. So you need 170 resistance or 170 accuracy. All right, but let's actually head into stage six of this because this is where I'm actually able to do it. So I am keeping people at an 18 second rotation and you can see the timing there. I did change my gear based on what I just showed. So Fitz has the essence burner and you saw I switched the artifacts for Megan and Hexandra as well. So we have Fitz that's going to cleanse after the recharging speed penalty goes up. See. So, boom, the boss is going to cleanse. Actually, didn't, yep, he, he did. I was like, wait, did he not cleanse it? Yeah, he did. He cleansed everything. So that was kind of perfect timing just as all the other debuffs are there. It's going to get a little bit wonky, but you could see, like, just after the boss does his skill, boom, Fitz is cleansing. And that's really the most important part. And you could see Sigrid is actually timed well to where the boss does have the increase attack, or sorry, decrease attack. The attack penalty debuff on for crucial times boom Erich is going so right here when the boss chomps and then heals she's not doing anything because Sigrid has put attack penalty up oh and hopefully the healing prohibition has landed as well so the boss isn't healing so that we don't have to have as much of that issue of dealing with the constant healing and then counteracting it with Sigurd and the team as like the best healing prohibition hero, you really can't go wrong. So that's my stage six. The same team will work as we go forward. I just need at higher levels in gear. But let's take a look at what people are actually using. So to push forward to stage seven, you can see people are still using Horus as a tank, but you are going to see some fits here as well. Here's a perfect example. Um, so people are using, <laughs> oh, that's funny. Horus as a tank, but still using fits as a cleanser. With it, like I mentioned, the ice traveler, because the traveler as ice is going to give you damage mitigation against that boss's ultimate, so he's not healing quite so much. Although, ideally, Sigrid, we know how good Sigrid is. She is a queen of healing prohibition, so you can try to time her to make sure that buff is staying up really well. That's a big, that makes a big difference, too. But as you can see, just a matter of getting some levels on my characters. There's a lot of legendary, no legendary teams right here, right? But as you see, this is a hard boss. And almost everyone here has level 100s or 5 stars, level 94, level 90 at least. Uh, but 5 star heroes in order to get the stats you need to successfully run this. This isn't the kind of boss you can just throw something in there and have it work. Until you're at the very end, of course, where you just have super OP gear and you can just smash your way through with top tier heroes, maybe. But as you progress, you need to get those timings that we talked about set. So you're going to see here Grave of Rot 12 again. V Cook, V Cook, V Cook, V Cook, V Cook. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, an answer. And same thing here. Look at Sigrid, Hexandra, Horus, Adventurer, V Cook. About as free-to-play friendly or $1 friendly as you can get. Honestly, this is a really good team. And th this is taking advantage of the five-man synergy. So let's see, like, example. Sigrid is in the crown. Hexandra in with the healing. And we have 
forest as the tank with scarab and ancestral protection. We have the traveler as the main DPS. And a gambler doesn't really work as well for the traveler. You don't want that. You'd ideally want platinum knight, but good enough. Um, and there's no shield, so this is kind of pointless, but they're using it just to get the crit rate stat, I guess. But hey, you got to use what you got. And V-Cook here is in the mirror. You could put him also in a lot of different stuff. Let's see what people are using. The mirror, the mirror, um, the crown on him. Why would they? Wait, yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> I don't think they realize um, that the crown you need to hit on their ultimate. Don't put the crown on V-Cook, guys. That's not doing anything. But yeah, the healing stuff is great for him. Uh, if you need to boost ultimate timing, you could try to put the uh, incense burner on him as well so that that's an epic artifact but yeah i wanted to really take a moment and showcase some teams here there's lots of great options to use here and i do want to point out like if you guys are lucky enough to get like a vinyara she's really amazing and like everything and definitely that includes the grave of rot i'm just gonna call her out because i know a lot of people have gotten vinyara on these season one accounts she reduces ultimate energy by a hundred percent for the boss really cool and pr puts up attack penalty so that makes a massive difference in being able to slow the boss down to allow your team to actually go through a proper rotation so just make sure you're checking all the boxes with the grave of rot i'm gonna keep working on my gear i think i just need to get some stronger gear to survive through this or i need to manual it but so far i haven't been too lucky as far as my gear goes from Grave of Venom. So I'm kind of farming Grave of Venom first before I go to finish tackling this and progress on to the legendary and mythical gear grind for this boss. But it would also help if I five-starred more heroes. But all right, guys, I hope this was helpful. I really want this discussion to help people to understand how to beat the boss. Keep in mind, uh, you also noticed I had special positioning. You can try to avoid getting all of your heroes hit with this skill here uh, by spreading people out how I had the positions. I, I forgot to note that. That's important as well. But you can't avoid this skill. It's a full board. It is what it is. And this is just going to be your tank anyway that gets devoured. So <laughs> you got to be ready to handle that as well. And... This can be where things really fall apart. So if you bring in, like I mentioned, the adventurer, or the, the traveler as a shield, that can really help fight this. We're also having attack penalty. And yeah, lots to consider for this boss. Lots of boxes to check, but you really want those that cleansing or debuff prevention. And Sigrid is also amazing to help prevent the boss from healing. So if you have that, you can probably make it work. Sometimes you just got a manual until you can power through or get the right timings. But all right, guys, again, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Be sure to download via Android, iOS, Mac, PC, Steam, or Epic Games if you haven't already. And thanks again to Dragonair Silent Gods for sponsoring today's video.